uh, Antarctic arm from Melanox. Uh, and in this talk, I'm uh, going to review with you uh, first the importance of uh, botanic analysis, uh, especially with the ongoing increase in, um, in NIC speed. Um, then we're going to review uh, two, uh, two examples of bottlenecks and how we deal with this and what we're done and what is uh, being done to, uh, to overcome them. Yeah, so first the motivation, then we'll review uh, some PCI bottleneck uh, and uh, later uh, bottleneck and CPU. Okay, so uh, NICs speeds are uh, getting uh, higher and higher. NICs are, are getting very fast. Uh, 100 gigabit per second NICs are here for, uh, for a few years now. Uh, uh, current uh, state of the art speeds is 200. And it's not stopping. Next we'll have 400. Uh, and we, we're gonna... Uh, uh, deal with uh, new challenges that these NICs uh, come with, uh, because this means that we will have a uh, higher packet rate, uh, which means that you have less time to spend processing every single packet. Um, the stack needs to uh, get aligned with this new uh, NIC speed. If you want to keep processing uh, the, uh, um, the, these packets, uh, with the same number of cores, then you have uh, lower, uh, lower time to spend. If you want to uh, spare more cores, then you need to solve some, some scaling issues. Uh, and we will see some examples uh, today. Uh, so uh, this does not come uh, uh, um, easily, you, can, you cannot just support this next speed with the current uh, or with all the uh, network stack. There are some bottlenecks that you need to deal with. Um, and uh, your performance is limited by your weaker component. So you need to uh, analyze different components uh, along the way uh, and you can get as fast as this component can, uh, can give you. Uh, that's why uh, I want to emphasize the, um, the importance of analyzing bottlenecks uh, in advance. Uh, do not wait until you hit this bottleneck because it could be um, too late. Um, uh, you need to prepare uh, both in hardware and software uh, to, uh, to, deal with, uh, uh, to deal with bottlenecks. Uh, and this is, like, this is the, um, the, the key stage that uh, will lead you to, uh, to prepare uh, a set of tasks, to, to have your, uh, your roadmap, uh, uh, you know, with your, uh, with your peers, with your colleagues, with the community, and how uh, you're going to deal with, uh, with the new problems. Uh, and you probably will not uh, keep uh, doing the... The, the, the things that it was done until now, you got, you're going to have some innovation to solve uh, the problems. Okay, so uh, I will start with, uh, with a PCI bottleneck. Uh, here you see a table of uh, different generations of PCI. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, generation three. You can see that the throughput is uh, uh, about 126 gigabits per second. Uh, now you take this 126 and you have, uh, not all of it is available for, for, uh, for you because uh, you have some overhead for the symbol encoding. You have headers uh, per, uh, per transaction. Uh, the transaction is done in uh, MPS size, which is retil uh, relatively small. It's, uh, it's about 256. It's configurable, but uh, it's still uh, small. Uh, and if we're talking about next speed of uh, 100 gigabits, 
uh, per second, then it, uh, it, uh, it leaves us uh, no enough room to reach our line rate uh, with our typical layouts uh, that we use till now uh, in our data path uh, descriptors. So we're going to uh, revisit um, the, the layouts of uh, Rx descriptors, TX descriptors, and the completion descriptors. Um, the problem uh, gets uh, even worse with, uh, when you want to reach line rate with small packets uh, because the descriptor's overhead is more dominant. Uh, so again, this demands rethinking uh, about things that you used to do until now. Uh, for, to deal with that, uh, we had to uh, um, to have new uh, um, new communication uh, descriptors with the hardware. Uh, software cannot do it by, by himself. It's a PCI transaction that both sides need to uh, agree about. Um, the heart of the uh, hardware features that I'm going to review now. Uh, the heart idea of that is that you already use uh, some moderation. You already do things in bulks then take advantage of that um, and reduce the overhead. Um, this, this, uh, you will see this uh, idea repeated in, um, in, the, in the features that I'm going to present. Uh, so first, uh, first one is the first feature that I'm going to present uh, deals with uh, um, reducing the overhead of uh, Rx completions. Then we'll see, uh, and we'll see how, what's the impact of that. Then uh, we'll see uh, in the TX side, again, uh, bulking the TX descriptors and what's the impact of that. Okay, so again, the goal is to reduce the PCI overhead, uh, uh, to, to reduce the data to completion ratio. Uh, so how it works, uh, until now we had uh, a fixed size completion for every packet, uh, no matter what was the packet size, so for small packets, uh, the, this fixed size was uh, 64 bytes, so for small packets, let's say packets of 64 bytes, uh, you actually had uh, um, the same you have you had a one to one uh, ratio uh, over the pci between uh, your data your packets and your completions and this way you can't uh, uh, your packet rate is very limited uh, so uh, how it works we uh, the feature is to compress um, the the completions uh, you take several completions that you already, uh, as I said, you already have moderation, you already uh, work in bugs. So uh, take these completions and compress them uh, so that uh, if the completions are, um, <clears throat> uh, are almost identical, uh, take this part, write it once, uh, and then uh, the, the parts that are um, with our per packet, that the unique information per packet, which is um, much smaller, uh, write, it, um, uh, write it for each packet, and then uh, this way you will save, uh, you save uh, space, you will save, save bandwidth on the PCI. Um, and of course, the more successful uh, uh, you are with compressing uh, completions, then your packet rate uh, can get higher and higher. Okay, so before the feature we had completion of 64 bytes per packet. After that we have some uh, shared uh, information of 64 bytes. Then uh, mini completions uh, with a unique information. It's uh, eight bytes each. Uh, so you can uh, open the session and compress. Uh, you can get uh, up to uh, uh, one eighth uh, of the original uh, overhead. 
Uh, okay, so some numbers. Uh, packet rate test of small packets with the server doing XDP drop, just with the XDP1 sample. Uh, before that, we had uh, 83 million uh, uh, packets per second. And with this feature, we are able to reach 130 uh, million packets per second. It's more than 50% uh, more. Uh, now the feature, the quick compression feature uh, was implemented and introduced back then uh, in kernel 4.7, but it gained extra significance when the software now uh, allows reaching this packet rate uh, with small packets. Uh, so this is thanks to XDP. Uh, today this feature is controlled via um, a private flag. Uh, actually, I would, uh, I would like to... Uh, um, discuss with you uh, the, what um, some, some some API. I would like to hear from you later, maybe uh, about uh, some uh, standardization of the of the API um, in, in standard um, tools, uh, if tool leveling. I don't know. So uh, I think uh, this kind of features uh, can can be standardized because these problems we we just started. Yeah, uh, things are getting uh, faster and faster, and we need to. Uh, get the Linux kernel uh, support these features as a standard. Okay, this was uh, one hardware feature. The second one is uh, bulking of TXT descriptors. Again, the goal is to reduce the overhead by combining transmit descriptors. Uh, it works um, by similar idea. Take the shared info, uh, which is the control segment uh, write it once and then write multiple data segments, uh, one per packet. Uh, this can work when you, when you know that you have uh, bulk trans, uh, transmissions. Uh, for example, this is good uh, in XDP redirect because there is some bulking there uh, of 16 or 8. Uh, also in XDP teaks. Uh, you can bulk up to the NAPI budget. Okay, so this is how it looks. Before the feature, uh, we had some control segment per packet, then the data segment, and some alignment to, to align for the 64 bytes, uh, and then the second packet, and so on. With this feature, we have one shared control segment and one data segment per packet. Uh, we can afford that because we have a bulk. Uh, and uh, uh, the ratio here is uh, uh, actually uh, uh, one, one fourth of, uh, um, your overhead is one fourth of what it used to be. So we see, uh, we say uh, PCI overhead. This is supported uh, from ConnectX uh, 5 and newer, starting kernel uh, 5.0. Uh, packet rate test, uh, same transmitter uh, on server, we run XDP TX, uh, the XDP2 sample. Before that, uh, we had um, 20 million packets per second. Uh, sorry, uh, 70 million packets per second. Uh, after that, we got uh, 116 packets per second for XDP TX. Um, yeah, this is 66 more, 66 uh, percent more packets per second. Uh, for XDP redirect uh, on the server, uh, again we use the sample program. Before that, we had 64 million packets per second, and with this feature, we have. Uh, 92 million packet percent. Uh, this is 44 percent more. Uh, that was uh, the PCI section. Uh, next, I'm going to review some CPU scaling issue. Uh, it's in the page allocator, in the Linux page allocator. Uh, so the, the Linux page allocator is a general component. It serves all subsystems. It's not dedicated to networking. Uh, 
there is some uh, body allocator, body system that uh, cares to minimize the, the external fragmentation and combines packets, uh, sorry, combines pages of, uh, of low orders into pages of higher orders. And this is a shared resource. Uh, different CPUs uh, ask for pages, uh, and, um, and this needs to be synced. Um, this is protected by a spin lock uh, in the in the struct zone. Uh, to reduce uh, the frequency of accesses to this shared resource, the kernel provides a layer of uh, local per CPU page lists, uh, PCPs in short. Uh, so for uh, for a page allocation uh, request, the kernel asks the local PCP for a page. If the if there is some page available, then we're done. If not, the PCP asks the body allocator for a page. Uh, and this is done under zone lock. Uh, same thing in page free, uh, very similar. Uh, kernel um, releases the page uh, back to the local PCP. Uh, just saying, local PCP. And then if this PCP is full, then uh, the PCP releases the pages back to the body system. This is done under zone lock. Yes? Sorry? I think that was fixed a month ago. The, the second the one? Free, yeah, the free because there was a bug there and it was freed back to the... Yeah, I, mean, I will mention that later. No, it's, it's, right. it's, it's not fixed. Right. It's just... It's not the, 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 yeah, the severity was reduced, but it's not totally fixed. Uh, just still, if, if the PCP gets full, then... There is no place. It, it, it must re uh, release the page back to the to the body allocator. Okay, so this is how it looks. One body allocator, uh, many PCPs, uh, one big lock. Uh, so when when every uh, PCP satisfies the local page allocation and freeze, uh, there is no contention, uh, and we are fine. But is that always the case? Can you guess? Uh, let's see. Okay, let's review the typical network flow. Uh, we have a, a receiving uh, per uh, usually per per core that allocates pages in advance uh, for the incoming packets. It does so from the local PCP. SKB is created, passed up the network stack, and once done, the pages of the SKB is released back to the uh, local PCP. Okay, all good, however. Uh, the processing, uh, the stack processing uh, has several scheduling points. Uh, this means that uh, handling and release of the SKB can be completed on a different core than the one uh, that allocated the pages. Okay, so for example, if uh, if Nappy runs on uh, PCP X, it keeps allocate pages, and SKB is continuously moved uh, to uh, to core to core Y. Then it will continuously release pages uh, to to another PCP. And this will cause imbalanced PCPs. Yeah, um, if this pattern is is repeated all the time, uh, then Core X will uh, will keep ask the body allocator for pages. Core X will keep ask, or actually PCP uh, Y will keep re uh, releasing pages back to the body system, and all is done under the same zone lock. Okay, let's, uh, let's do some tests and see how severe the problem is. Uh, so the, uh, the setup is that I used the uh, connected um, 500 uh, gigabits back to back, uh, 48 cores. Uh, I used uh, 12 uh, channels, 12 re receivings. 
running uh, 240 net perf instances TCP multi-stream. Uh, kernel is, is very is, is, is new. It's five uh, five zero some RC of five zero. I modified it uh, to disable some of the page uh, page allocation optimizations that we already have. Uh, I didn't want to, uh, to use them. Uh, I reduced the MTU to half the size uh, in order to uh, simulate the packet rate of 200 gigabit snake. Uh, so first, uh, one observation. Uh, actually, we have two types of cores. Uh, type one runs both NAPI and some net server processing. So it keeps allocating pages for the uh, receiving, and it also releases some pages back. Uh, the, the second type, of course, uh, runs only net server and it just keeps releasing pages. Bandwidth is not uh, so good, only 40 gigabits per second. Let's see why. So when monitoring uh, the two events of uh, page allocation and page free in perf, perf stat, okay, so system-wide the numbers are uh, fine. We see more or less the same allocation and free uh, statistics. Uh, then I looked into core number one. I see that there are many page allocations, few page frees. Uh, this means that it's core of type one that I described earlier. Um, and of course, it's an imbalanced PCP and it's gonna uh, take the lock and access the body allocator. Another core. It represents the other type of cores. Um, um, it only frees pages. There's one page allocation that I need to figure out where it comes from. Uh, but yeah, it's an imbalanced PCP and it also needs to, uh, uh, to access the, the zone under the zone lock. Uh, flame graph. This is how it looks. Uh, we are spinning 55% of the time, uh, system-wide. Uh, you can see the 12 blocks of NAPI processing on the left-hand side. Uh, let's zoom into one of them. Okay, so this is the NAPI processing. Within this NAPI processing, 77% of the time we are spinning. So, so we, we, we clearly see the bottleneck here. Uh, some solutions uh, that were suggested. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, introduce uh, the page pool API uh, by, by Jesper. Unfortunately, he had to leave yesterday. He's not attending today. Uh, it was uh, mer it, it's, it's under the net subsystem. It was uh, introduced in kernel 4.18. Uh, and it has several goals, uh, but the, in, in general, it, it, uh, the, the, the main goal is to uh, deal with these uh, kind of problems uh, of the page allocator. Uh, and many of the ideas that I will describe later uh, are intended to be integrated into the page pool. Okay, so first idea is page reuse make reuse of, the, of your own page, uh, achieve better page utilization. It's very simple, uh, very fundamental. Uh, for example, for 4K, uh, uh, four kilobyte page, you can flip it twice for default MTU, and this way you reduce uh, the allocation rate by half. Um, we actually have some hardware feature and, um, that does um, uh, better utilization according to the actual received uh, uh, packet size and not according to the MTU size. Uh, but um, I'm gonna move on to the next uh, idea. Uh, second idea is to uh, recycle the page. So you as a driver or you as a page pool uh, maintain a waiting queue of allocated pages, of um, the pages that you already allocated from the PCP. 
uh, and uh, of course, this page is processed by the by the stack. There is some ref counting going over there, uh, and when you when you need to uh, allocate uh, some new page, you check internally for an available one. Um, usually, um, you you check that the ref count is back to one because you hold the you hold the refer reference count, and you need all the other reference counts to be released. Uh, the issue here is that there is no signaling or, call or callback mechanism, uh, and you need to continuously observe the ref count uh, upon your allocations. Uh, and then you are exposed to head of the queue blocks, because if your uh, first page in the queue is not released yet, it's not av available for you, then it's unclear what is the right strategy to do here. Is it just to release it or, you know, uh, 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 pop it back to the end of the queue? Uh, there's no clear policy and there's no one policy that is uh, good for all cases. This is still helpful, actually, if you know and expect uh, the traffic pattern and the processing time that you, your, your uh, data center uh, is working on. Uh, and and then uh, uh, tune your uh, recycled queue accordingly. Uh, next idea is to page remote release. Uh, this is very interesting, actually, um, as suggested by by Eric. Uh, uh, we talked about this about uh, I think uh, two or three minutes ago in some break. Uh, so the idea is um, to, to have some page return hook directly uh, to, to release the page directly to its originating uh, PCP uh, from the remote PC, from your, uh, your, your working PCP, which is the remote one because you, you probably moved to the original uh, PCP. This way you keep uh, the PCPs balanced uh, for this, you need to save some minimal amount of metadata uh, on the uh, SKB structure uh, and use it uh, upon the SKB release. Uh, the recent direction is to integrate this into the page pool API um, and release the page back to the page pool and not to the PCP. Uh, two proposed places were suggested uh, in put page. Uh, and in K-free uh, SKB, uh, currently the direction is to go for K-free. Uh, Eric pointed out um, many problems with, with that. Uh, Elias here uh, trying his best to uh, to deal with the uh, with the issues. But this is the the, the directions. Uh, you can there is a pointer for the notes that uh, Jesper and Elias are taking uh, uh, during their uh, solutions. You can go and um, and see the, actual, the current status. Uh, and lastly, uh, actually, no, no matter how uh, how good you get in the net uh, network stack, um, an orthogonal uh, effort can be also done in the memory subsystem in the mem in the MM subsystem uh, to. Um, to improve the, the scaling of the zone lock. So there is some RFC uh, by Aaron Liu. Um, I, I don't want to get into the, the idea, but uh, he found some, um, some places that uh, the, um, to, to, to reduce the, uh, the critical section, the num number of operations and the cost of the operations that is done under the, the, the lock. Um, and um, th this way, um, um, he actually uh, um, improves the scaling of the lock, uh, unrelated to the efforts we are doing in the net subsystem. Uh, accepted patches in the in the MM uh, subsystem. Uh, there were some improvements. Uh, 
uh, accepted to 417. Again, I don't want to get into this, and there's some bug fix. I, th I think this is the one that Elias mentioned. Yeah, okay. So um, my earlier uh, simulation and test was done with this fix inside, okay? So uh, this fix uh, just reduces the severity. It does not solve the problem. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, time for questions. Yeah, so the original idea I had uh, one year ago um, was sending back the SKB to the original uh, uh, CPU using a, a channel with an IPI. But uh, I had an idea uh, last week. I sent a patch. Uh, L uh, yesterday, okay. uh, in TCP stack, you can actually use a per TCP cache of one SKB, meaning that at receive message time, when you copy the data, instead of doing k SKB on behalf of the process consuming the SKB, you just put it back in the TCP socket. And so the next packet being received by bottom half will free the SKB. So it will be freed on the behalf of the Mm. CPU feeding the packet on the queue. And that gave me like 10% improvement in TCP RR workload, RPC workload. Uh, so it's interesting uh, how much will it give with my test where I force some cores to not do NAP allocations and others do NAP allocations. I still no. didn't have a chance to, to take a look at your patch, but uh, I would be glad to, uh, and to test it. That was 10% with the page recycle in place. So that's right. only a cost of the SK buff itself, because the page recycling only works for the page, but not the SK buff, right? But it, it depends on the assumption that there is some next packet, or? Yeah, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So is your Rx descriptor is 64 bit, 64 byte wide? Each Rx descriptor is 64 bit wide? Uh, this was the completion, not the Rx descriptor. Uh, and yeah, it's 64 bytes. OK. Uh, don't have the slides. And so you mentioned about the compression of the Rx descriptor completion. Is it compression or just the completion queue? We compress the completions so that instead of uh, 64 bytes completion per packet. We have one 64 bytes completion for, for the shared info and then eight bytes for each packet. Okay. Which, yeah. And uh, the spin lock which you mentioned which shows up 55%, 75%, would that problem go away if you just task set and do your interrupt affinity correctly? Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, you mentioned there are various spin locks showing up in the test like 55%, 77%, because your NAPI is running somewhere than the consumer CPU. Right. If you task set everything, more or less, the consumer producer and your interrupt, mm -hmm. would that problem automatically come down? Yeah, if, you have, if your PCB, PCPs are balanced, so you have more or less the same allocation and free rate of per PCP, then yeah, there's no problem, or the problem is much less severe. Yeah, that's because I configured my setup this way. I, I have only 12 uh, NAPI uh, processors uh, and for 48 cores that do other stuff, that do uh, net perf uh, processing. OK. Another question is the bulking works uh, without XTP. Does it work for normal TCP flows with XMIT more? Kind of when do you stop the bulking for TX? Uh, it, it could work. It's not uh, implemented yet because uh, the bottleneck in this case is not yet the PCI. The bottleneck is the CPU, the, the, uh, the heavy net, network stack. Does not allow these rates yet. But, but yeah, it's the same idea can be implemented. There's no, no limitation. Right, and with the bulking, do you see uh, uh, partial rates going down substantially on the bus? Sorry? Uh, 
since you implemented this bulking, do you see the PCI partial rights going down? I didn't monitor that. <laughs> okay. No, no. No, thank you. More questions? I so I'm just kind of puzzled. I look at um, receive things. So um, Virtio, for example, is slightly different. What it's doing is storing the like any extra data linearly with a packet and then you just make descriptors much smaller right and so I understand that your your, your transmit descriptors are also um, like after you compress everything you kind of get um, eight, an 8 byte control and eight, uh, no, 16 byte control and 8 bytes each data right this is the TX not the yeah. compression yeah, yeah. For example, and RX is, is also 16 bytes. The, the overhead of the control is 16 bytes, and then 8 bytes per packet. Right, I'm just, so I'm saying, on average, after compression, you get 16 bytes per packet in both yeah, directions. Uh, I prefer to call it uh, bulking, not compression, not to mix with the other uh, feature. But uh, yeah, uh, for, for large uh, bulks, you can just uh, ignore the first 16 bytes, and then you have one data segment of eight bytes instead of 64. Right. So it's one eight. Uh, yeah, so maybe another kind of possibility to consider is really basically doing what Virtaio is doing. Sorry? Which is, so what Virtaio is doing is just storing metadata linearly with a packet. And then each descriptor is just a pointer. And so each descriptor is 16 bytes without like compression of bulking tricks. That yeah, might be something interesting. Yeah, but, but, but if, you, if you don't have a bulk to deal with, then you have to have your control uh, segment. And you want to be aligned to, to cache line. So that's what we had before this feature. The, the key here right, is that you, you have a bulk to, to uh, uh, to write to write down to the PCI. Otherwise, you're not gonna save. There's there's yeah. no opportunity to save. Exactly. So that that's my point. So yeah. What I'm saying is, alternative is if you can you could store some data linearly with a packet, then you have 256 bytes <coughs> PCI Express packets anyway. And so with small, uh, like if packets are smaller than 256 bytes, for example, you're, you're, you're sending this data anyway. So you could, you could put extra data there. Th you, that's what Vertai was doing. You're suggesting to inline the packet? Because we, we have that also, I didn't mention. In, inline control with the packet. So you would have yeah, a it's packet just, and then a yeah, data we, linearly with it. We, 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 have, we support this feature. It's not just out of the scope of these slides, okay. but yeah, we, that's, that, that's a good idea and uh, we, we support that. Okay, we're, we're gonna stop here. Oh, one quick one, go, yeah. go ahead. Um, one minute question. So I have just a quick question, uh, which relates to your talk and the previous comment both. So um, the data you were showing um, in terms of improvement is talking about a very homogeneous workload. So those kinds of workloads can um, show the value of any kind of you know, PCIe improvements to the workload. Do you see the same kind of improvement or any uptake in improvement um, using the ideas you suggested with a mixed workload and a full Linux stack? That's my first question. And second is relating to the comment that was made just before I started speaking, uh, was the use of, you know, a 256 byte uh, PCIe transaction. Um, do you see that uh, idea also usable in a full Linux stack with a regular workload like 
and I'm not going into anything more than a micro benchmark, but if you used iPerf with mixed sizes, would you see an improvement? Yeah, the, the size here is not was not part of the uh, synthetic benchmark. Uh, it was just to uh, emphasize that uh, we it's just to make things uh, more difficult because when you work with small packet sizes, then the packet rate is higher. Uh, but the same idea does not um, uh, rely on the packet size. Or you can work with any packet size or with different packet sizes. Um, the, the, the heart of all these features is to reduce overhead by using bulks and it can be, yeah, it can be used, uh, to answer your first question, it can be used along uh, the, the stack uh, everywhere. Uh, you need to find the right, uh, right tra uh, trade-off, the right balance point between um, okay. too, too, too long uh, bulk and uh, uh, because this will get you your uh, your your cache uh, dirty and okay. Uh, uh, let's take this one after the outside, please. Thanks. Let's give it up for Tariq. Thank you.